Good morning and welcome to St. Olaf's online service. Today is the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Our guest celebrant and preacher this morning is the Reverend Dr. P.J. Carefoot. P.J. is the head of the Department of Rare Books and Special Collections at the Thomas Fisher Rare Book Library at the U of T. Next Sunday, the 12th of September, we will be switching over from creating these pre-recorded services to having in-person services once again in our church building, and those services will also be live streamed onto the internet. So next Sunday, you are invited to join us here at St. Olaf's for a service of worship at 1030 in the building, and you will also have the option of watching that service live on YouTube. Our service this morning is a service of Holy Communion, and we begin with the introit psalm, Psalm 84, verses 1 to 7, found on page 437. Our processional hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Lovely are thy dwellings, thou Lord of hosts. My soul hath a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found her an house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be always praising thee. Blessed are the men whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the pilgrim ways, 
who going through the veil of misery use it for a well. Yea, the early rain cover it with blessings. They go from strength to strength. And unto the God of gods appeareth every one of them in Zion. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, how lovely are thy dwellings, thou Lord of hosts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise. Make us to love that which thou dost command, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson is written in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, 5th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou be also tempted, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another, for every man shall bear his own burden. Here ends the first lesson. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth. And the strength of the hills is his also. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
Among the many books I had never read until I had to was Lucy Maud Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. And growing up, of course, it just wasn't the sort of thing that boys read, but it was going to be featured in one of my exhibitions at the library, so it just seemed like it was the right thing to do. Now, if you didn't know, Montgomery, who was the wife of a United Church minister, actually lived in this parish for many years over on Riverside Drive. Now, I obviously knew that Anne had been a beloved figure in Canadian fiction for a century by the time that I picked up the book, partly because of her unabashed curiosity about the world around her, partly because she is willing to stand up for her sex in a man's world, and partly because of her honesty in a society where etiquette forced people to hide their true feelings. But more than anything else, I discovered that the red-headed orphan from Prince Edward Island who lost everything when she lost her parents has inspired generations because in spite of all the tragedy, she maintained a spirit of wonder for the world all around her when others in the same situation would have turned inward and focused on the gloom. Where others just saw a lane of gnarly old trees, she saw the white way of delight where her school friends saw only an old pond, she saw the lake of shining waters. And while her vivid imagination drove the adults around her crazy and frequently landed her in heaps of trouble, Anne's sense of awe and utter gratitude for the very smallest of things was infectious, inspiring even the most crotchety of her neighbors to re-examine their attitude towards living. Dear old world, she murmurs at one point in the story, you are very lovely, and I'm glad to be alive in you. Essentially, what the fictional Anne cultivated in the face of all of her problems was an attitude of gratitude, a spirit that is very much at the heart of today's gospel. And like Anne's story, today's gospel also begins with unwanted persons. In this case, not an orphan, but 10 pitiful lepers. Now, because of their affliction and to protect the tribe, the book of Leviticus insisted that people like them should be declared unclean by the priests, ruthlessly separated from their family and loved ones, and then forced to live in a community of utter despair, a perfect example of misery loving company. They had to leave their hair disheveled, cover their upper lips, and cry out so everyone could hear them coming, unclean, unclean, they shouted. And that's how we first meet them this morning, standing by the side of the road, lifting up their disfigured limbs, and calling out to Jesus for mercy, bellowing from the safe distance of the 100 paces required of them by the law. Now, a considerate passerby might throw a piece of food in their direction, or perhaps throw some small alms, and then move along hurriedly so as to avoid contagion. But never, never could the lepers be allowed to forget what they had become. Never could they avoid the fact that they were social pariahs, as well as men and women destined to die a horrible, and painful death, abandoned and bereft of human comfort. They could be forgiven if at the very moment that Jesus and his disciples walked safely by, that they didn't have many reasons to feel grateful. But then an incredible thing happens. Jesus, you'll notice, doesn't lay a single hand on any of them. Instead, from that safe distance of what today would be an entire city block, he shouts back at them and he says, go and show yourselves to the priest. And amazingly, that's exactly what they do without hesitation. With their improvised crutches under what was left of their shoulders and leaning on each other for balance, they hobble off down the dusty road to go and show themselves to the very same men who had initially condemned this condemn them to this life of desolation in the first place. Without their priestly approval, they would never be allowed to integrate 
into society again. Now, what is truly astounding about the scene to me, however, is the fact that they actually set off on this trek at all, given that there was no good reason to do so. What exactly were they supposed to show to the priests? When they left Jesus, they hadn't been cured yet. That happened, we are told, along the way. When they left Jesus, they were all still very much lepers. Now, St. Luke doesn't tell us, but I wonder if, as they began staggering along that path together, they weren't wondering what the heck they were doing. Why trust this man? But then at some point along the road, one must have looked at another and realized that her companion's arm appeared not withered, but whole again. Then perhaps she noticed that the nose on another friend's face looked human once more and not like some unspeakable gash. Did she, to her astonishment, suddenly grasp that her own shrunken and deformed fingers were now flexible again as she wiped away the tears of joy that were coursing down a neighbor's face? The story of the healing of the ten lepers is, first of all, a parable about trust. Now, although only one in the end returns to give thanks for what was done, we should never lose sight of the fact that all of them believed enough to make that expedition into the unknown when Jesus told them to do so. Like us, they didn't know at the time when they were just setting out what God had in store for them. Like us, they began their journey uncertain about what the ending was going to be. And for that reason alone, I believe that all 10 should be celebrated as examples of hope and trust and not just the one who came back to offer thanks. But of course, the story doesn't end there. The fact is that one of them did return and did offer thanks. They apparently all did exactly as Jesus had instructed them and presented themselves to the priests. We can assume that much. But the fact is that he never demanded that they should track him down afterwards to say thank you. But relieved in body, mind, and spirit, they likely all parted ways, hoping that they would never see each other again, happy to be spared of any reminder of their shared misfortune. The only thing on their minds now probably was just getting home and getting back to normal, and doesn't that sound familiar to us this year? And like most of us, after some ordeal has passed, the nine former lepers probably settled back into their comfortable routine again forgetting to be grateful for the good things that they now enjoyed. So what made that one leper different then? It wasn't just that he was a foreigner, although he was. It was the fact that out of all of them, he made the deliberate choice to be grateful. There's no deep theology in that. There's, there's no hidden meaning. He simply reminds us that Approaching life with a thankful spirit is often a choice. It certainly is during the difficult times through which we are now living. But there are benefits in living that way. Blessings, like the one the leper received from Jesus himself at the end of today's gospel. A clinical study at the University of Toronto proves what we probably already know, that the person who is consciously grateful is also inclined to see the best in other people, tends to be more trusting, and is happier in general. But we also know that it is easy to take the good things that we enjoy in this life for granted, and that's why today's gospel is so important. It forces us to pause and consider the many ways that we are blessed by God and by the other people in our lives. The fact that we inhabit a planet which, among all of the galaxies, has the perfect combination of atmosphere and environment to sustain life at all is God's gift. The beauty of creation all around us, that is God's gift. The fact that God has entrusted us to be stewards of that creation, called to protect and defend it, that is his most honorable gift. 
the people who love and care for us, the expertise and skill of the medical professionals who are healing our communities right now, these all come as his gift. The ability to share our time, talent, and treasure with the less fortunate, that's God's gift. For all of these things and for so much more that we can be thankful, we can be thankful if we choose to be. But we mustn't be naive. There are people here in this parish this morning, this very moment, who for very good reasons are hanging on by a thread, feeling that there is little for them to be grateful for today. It is our privilege as their fellow travelers on their journey to offer our shoulders for them to lean on, to give them someone to be thankful for. And that too is God's gift. The leper in this morning's gospel leaves us today with an example to follow. He reminds us that in the end, gratitude is simply the recognition that everything around us is gift, pure gift. All that we are, all that we possess, ultimately comes from his bounty. If we can become aware of that truth, and be grateful for the ordinary miracles of life and love and goodness that we receive from his hand every single day. Perhaps we can adapt Anne of Green Gables' prayer and make it our own. Oh God, you are very lovely, and I am glad to be alive in you. Amen. The angel of the Lord tarrieth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee.
Let us pray for the church. In particular, this morning, we are asked to pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. And in our own diocese, we pray today for the Bishop's Youth Ministry Committee. Let us also pray for the work of the Primates World Relief and Development Fund and for their work with vulnerable communities throughout the world. And let us pray for our parish, especially for our South Sudanese brothers and sisters who worship at St. Olaf's, as well as their family and friends living amid conflict at home or displaced in refugee camps. For Kathy Langston's Hosanna Children's Mission to Romania, for the Second Century Mission Fund, and for Hunger Patrol. Let us pray for the nations of the world, remembering this day the people of Afghanistan and Haiti, that peace may be known throughout the world, for an end to racial inequity, police brutality, violence, all abuses of power, and for an equitable distribution of vaccines. Let us pray for all who are sick, remembering especially those suffering from COVID-19, and Doris, Iris, Graydon, Eve, Kathy, Patty, Darlene, Andrea, Joyce, Barbara, Ian, Gauss, Kathy, and David. Let us pray for all who are grieving or suffering in any way for the unemployed and those in any form of anxiety or distress, especially John, June, Karen, Joan, Evelyn, Patricia, Vivine, Charles, Diane, Amaya, George, the Flanagan family, and Maggie. For residential school survivors and their families, for those who have lost their loved ones or livelihood to the pandemic. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest, especially Tim Gray, Ruth Dodson, Roger Train, the very Reverend Wal Walter Raymond, Ed Flanagan, Mises Bezinskis, Stella Bozinskis, and the Reverend Dr. Schuyler Brown. And on her year's mind, Gladys Kirk, who died in 2008. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Andrew, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. 
And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, and we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father, Father of our, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ maker, maker of all things, and judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant, grant that, that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labour and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, whom with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit we confess as one God in trinity of persons, and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of thy glory, O Father, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto Thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in her peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen.